or one day it's thursday may 27th wow how'd that happen i know i say that every week 2021 this is the week and charts obviously i want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight i appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule it looks like more and more people are finding the show if you or watching this on YouTube, then and you want to attend live, then go to DaveLeonard.com slash webinar. Even if the date is old, register, and it will put you in for the next show, even if that show hasn't been announced yet. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, a little choppy out there, a little toppy out there in certain areas. We'll get to that. Your questions on trading your favorite stock picks. If you don't mind, hold off on the stock picks till we get the live charts, but please start thinking about them now so we have some time to, so uh, we'll have some to think, we'll have some to look at when we get the live charts, I think is what I'm trying to say. So tonight I wanna to talk about a return to profit centers. And over the last couple of weeks or a week or so, the, the ETF trading hasn't been phenomenal from, from memory. I'll have to go in and look at everything, but I know that there's been some, some choppy days in there. But the Russian dolls have been doing pretty good as of late. So I want to focus on that tonight. Just have a few examples, and then we'll hop into the charts. That's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you could lose money trading or as often sum it up, barring a line from Greg Morris, all predictions about the future, and a lot of stuff in between now and then. All right. As I've been saying lately, I've been working really hard on these profit centers. And every now and then, as I've said before, I'll find myself pretty exhausted by the end of the day because i'm i'm kind of torn in a lot of directions obviously there's projects and all going on but more specific to the profit centers i am watching a screen occasionally probably a little too much maybe doing a little too much trading here and there maybe watching in some cases too many markets now bitcoin and the crypto the shit coins aren't really that hot right now so that's kind of giving me a reprieve or a break from that for the most part i have positions on but i'm just letting them sit but you, there is a downside to this, obviously, is let's say you have a bad day in the core methodology, and then you have a bad day in your profit centers, then it's kind of a double whammy. Now, my fantasy would be to be able to make money in the profit center, especially on those days when the core methodology is not working out so well, when I have a bit of a drawdown there to kind of balance things out. And also, it would be kind of cool, and I'm, I'll flesh this out in a little more details, but kind of cool to take some money out of the profit centers and and maybe do some fun things with them and that'll make a little more sense in, in a few minutes at least from from my own personal standpoint so there is a danger to the profit centers the profit centers are ancillary may, ways to make money either with markets that you don't normally trade outside of stocks for instance which is my main focus or outside of your methodology so within stocks maybe the opening gap reversals or the russian dolls which we're going to talk a little bit about both of tonight. But again, you got to be careful with these things. But if you, I think there's something there. And I think if you could do them right, I think longer term, it could certainly add to your performance. And I hate to use the word income, but possibly produce a little short, let's just call it shorter term profits. Some shorter term profits while you wait for the real prize. And, and one of the problems, because of the pro, speaking of the prize, is you you want to keep your eye on the prize because the real money is in these longer term trends and today i was looking at the portfolios and there were it was a good day now we don't always has we don't always have good days i don't know what's wrong with my mouth tonight but we've because we've had a few bad days recently but today was one of those really really good days and and the intraday stuff the russian dolls made a few hundred dollars better than the poke in the arm and the other stuff was was in the thousands of dollars and and so you you just got to be careful not to keep your eye not to take your eye from the prize keep your eyes on the prize is what i'm trying to say but every now and then if you're here anyway and even if you are able to just let's say watch the first 30 minutes of trading maybe you can squeeze off a couple of these trades and then go off to save lives build buildings and do other Great things, repair automatic transmissions. Okay, Russian dolls. I'm still getting questions on this, even though I talk about it quite often. Essentially, what we're looking for is a pattern within a pattern, just like the dolls within the doll, as I have pictured here. It's a it's a fractal, if you will. So 
let's say you've got a nice little pullback pattern and then the next day you get a breakout above the prior day's high or if it's a wide range bar maybe the next day you get some sort of intraday breakout and you're trading that or a pullback intraday or maybe even a bow tie or something like that so again it's a pattern within a pattern now this one i thought i had in a landry list but actually it was an opening gap reversal and that's where i found the stock but i like the fact that it rallied sharply off its lows and then had pulled back a little bit in other words it was a first thrust type of setup it might have also been a bow tie in this particular case and you don't want to trade completely in a vacuum and the this one and another one i'm going to show you in just one second these are these i think ride is an electric motor company i'm pretty sure it is but i know nicola is or nicola or nicola <laughs> So I think within that space, these things are bouncing nicely. It could be the mother of all bottoms in these areas, but at the least, since they were since they've been strong as of late, I thought it would be worth a shot. So here's the trades that I did in Ride, and let's take a look at them on the chart. You can see that. Remember, it was an opening gap reversal, so it began to rally up. So I figured it'd be worth a shot. I got in here. Now I didn't necessarily wait for it to pull back and then hop in as it was dropping my stop was above the market and this thing kept rallying and rallying and rallying and it hits my stop and unfortunately it comes right back in and i stopped out now i'm going to kind of kind of backing into something here and i'm going to get into this in more details why did i exit so soon well it just seemed like it was failing right away and I don't remember exactly what happened on this day. Maybe I had some other positions that were failing and felt like I needed to stop the coinage. Maybe I thought it was just a tight stop would work and I didn't think about it. I could have looked at my trading journal and see what I was thinking on this particular day. And I'll do that for next week. But for whatever reason, I stopped out. Now, obviously, in perfect hindsight, I should have given it more room. Maybe I wasn't giving it enough room based on the volatility of the stock. Now, the old me, the way I would trade these opening gap reversals would be to buy in just like I bought in here. So I'm not upset that I that I got in because I think that's a good place to get in because give it some morning wiggle room, let it do its gyrations. Not necessarily, I get this question all the time, not necessarily wait so many minutes, okay? but maybe try to hold off a little bit, getting in that first little uptick or two to see if it does follow through. And after about 15 or 30 minutes in this, watching this uh, screen here, you know, just keep a loose eye on it. I said, well, if it goes, if it rallies up to let's say around 875 or 865, whatever the number is in here, it's probably gonna keep on going. And obviously I was wrong with that, but the point I was trying to get to earlier a few minutes ago is that the old me would have bought at that level on a stop and then when triggered in i would have placed a stop right below this low okay now for some reason like i said i got a little aggressive put in a really tight stop i don't know why i did that exactly i just kind of felt like it should trigger and just keep on going and again i'm gonna flesh out some of these things in just a minute or two but for what it's worth i did stop out of this position at a it's a pretty big loss and this is on roughly about 100k account and as you saw a second ago it was about a thousand shares so when it started to break out again it decided well let's go back after this one and it really didn't do a whole lot and then i ended up selling half on the next open so i actually took it home which you could argue, you know, shame. I think I had a little profit by the close. And I'll talk about taking them home in one second. There is a danger in taking home a day trade. But for whatever reason, I decided to take this one home, sold on today's open or around today's open, got out of half of it for 375. So did okay on that trade. And then I put in a trailing stop or I had a trailing stop on the remainder. And then I decided to go ahead and just bail out on the close for the remainder of the position. So this was an opening gap reversal the day before. I got stopped out on my first stab. On my second stab, it worked pretty good. 
Now, there's a fine line between Einstein's definition of insanity, and that is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome, and then being willing to shrug shrug off a loss, okay, and get right back up and go right back to the well and take a trade. And I think you have to be willing to shake it off and go back in, but don't just keep beating your head against the wall just because it feels good when it stops. Going in, going in, going in and losing, going in and losing. Sometimes a trade just doesn't work out. Sometimes the move just doesn't materialize. And then I ended up bailing out on the remainder of this position at the end of the day. So I made well over 300 total, and that this trade started miserably with almost an instant, instant for me, anything, anytime I'm losing money within 30 minutes or so, that's pretty much a failure on some of these big money, I should say, relative to the account size, of course. Now, Niccolo was in the, was a Landry list a few days ago, and people are always ask me, what's a Landry list? Well, every day I publish a trading service, and to the left of the trading service is the Landry list, and when I hop into the live charts for the daily video, you'll see I go through the Landry list. Now, you can go through many, many years of the trading service for free by going to daveleonard.com slash archives to kind of get a feel for things. And that's one reason I don't give free trials. Other The other reason is that if you give somebody a free trial, you know, three days later or whatever, what'd you think? Oh, I didn't, I didn't have time to look at it. I didn't, I didn't bother looking at it. You know, that's that's a four or five minute video and I just don't have time for that. <laughs> it's like, I spent hours putting that together. But anyway, so I kind of think you have to have a little skin in the game, but if you're willing to do your research for free, and I think that's generous of me, <laughs> you can go out and look at the archives and get a feel for things. Anyway, so this was kind of cup and handily. It wasn't quite a bow tie, but it's another one of these electric car companies that looks like it was bottoming out and looking pretty darn good in here and i like the way it looked on a daily chart and i decided it was worth going after on a intraday basis so there's the trades going into it and once again i triggered in and then i ended up selling by the close and i banked another loss on this one a huge loss 90 bucks that's less than a tenth of 1% on this account. Now I do these across multiple accounts, so it does add up after a while. But this is what I would consider something I would just kind of sweep under the rug and not worry about. Now the next day, I thought it still looked pretty darn good. So I went in and, now here's a case by the way, where you can see within the first 15 minutes, this is a 15 minute bar, within the first 15 minutes, I triggered in. And let's see what happened from there. Well, you could have gotten in a little bit later in this particular case, but sometimes that first 15 minute bar, that could be all the move you get in a day and it could have gone another point at you in 15 minutes and then came back in and through proper money management, obviously you get your partial profits out and you scratch out on the remainder or maybe even make a little profit on the remainder. Now, this is another case where I actually, no, I didn't take it home, but oh yeah, I took the trade home, but in this case, I only bought 400 shares. Now, why did I only buy 400 shares when I bought 1,000 earlier? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I might have been a little gun shy, so that was the buy on that one, and that was the sell again. And this might be a duplicate. I had a duplicate in here earlier. I couldn't find it. Okay, that was a duplicate. Okay, deja vu, huh? All over again. Okay, so it doesn't let me, think or swim doesn't let you grab the current day's trades from the website, I'm sorry, TD Ameritrade, you can't grab the trades from the website. This, these are the trades that, this is where I went back in and I ended up holding overnight. And I'll explain that holding overnight in just one second. So that was the buy on that day. And again, we held past the close and then we come in today and had a pretty nice rally. So I ended up selling half and then I sold the remainder on the close. Now, two things here, because I want to, circle back for this. Number one, you'll notice that 
I took pretty big profits on the first low. Well, the, the stock was doing pretty good. And I decided that my original risk was a half a point with which gives me a half a point initial profit target and then I trail that stop higher at a half a point. But in this particular case, since it was doing pretty good on a day and I was up nicely, well over half a point, I said, you know what? I'm gonna see if I can squeeze out two to one, get a full point out of this trade. And you know, maybe my reasoning was also because I had smaller share size, like who who cares? But if I if I hold on a little longer, it's only it'd only be 200 shares. I'm flipping out. It's only what points, a couple hundred bucks, you know, better than poking it. I thought, you know, and, and and never minimalize how much that is. Like I just said, a sweep on the rug or 100 bucks. Well, that's twenty five thousand dollars a year, you know, if you did that every day. So you do have to be careful. But anyway, so I ended up selling half at one point and then I ended up exiting on the close. Now, well, Dave, you held the prior day. And it's like, yeah, well. I did, and I don't remember the exact reasoning on that. I'll have to go in and look, but it, it might have been because I was so busy getting out of other positions, I didn't have time to get out of this position that I couldn't use the market on close because it doesn't, the exchanges won't take a market on close, or at least certain brokerages won't take them on a volatile stock if you don't get that order in really early. And if you do get the order in really early, as I learned a few weeks back, which it turned, to be, it turned out to be okay, but you could get trapped into these market on close things. Now these market on close things are great, what I found for like these leverage ETFs. If I've got a half a dozen, you know, usually it's not that many, but sometimes it can be leverage ETFs. So on, I can just go in about five minutes before the close, and just nail them all with market on closes. Then I can sit back and relax, I know, aha, and then watch the close. Now in this particular case, I'll tell you one reason I got out on the close, even though it closed so well, and my gut was that, you know, this thing will likely follow through. I probably should have held for another close, but I decided that I wanted to bank the money because I've, like I said earlier, or alluded to earlier, I've been using my profit centers and this the the stock profit centers in particular, not so much the crypto profit centers, but I've been using the stock profit centers, more specifically the Russian dolls and the ogres and the intraday leverage ETFs, been using those to help fund a little project I could I have going on around here. It's gonna fund my my outdoor kitchen. And then as I think I might have said last week, finding anybody to, to show up. Is next to impossible, but we did we were able to nail down an outdoor kitchen guy. And so pressure's kind of on me to generate enough capital to pay for the kitchen. And I've got to be careful in doing that because this is above and beyond all my other trading. But again, I have to be careful and remember to keep my eyes on the prize. The real money is in this longer term trend trading, like the sky T. We caught last week and then like ASO, we've been riding that forever. CPE was recently up 500% and it's backed off a little bit. And all those other ones in the portfolio, I think I have a portfolio snapshot on the website. And if you watch a recording of this, it's in the uh, Trading Simplified Show, by the way. If you watch a recording of this and post, I'll throw a snapshot in tonight. But anyway, the real money is in these longer term trends, the four and 500 and hopefully a thousand percent or more moves. I know they don't come along every day, but when they do, it could be really, really sweet. But in the meantime, again, I think if you're trading these profit centers, you could do fairly well. And I, and I haven't, I don't wanna say they're half-baked, but I haven't fully formed these all these profit centers, but I do know over the years that clients have, did, have done really well trading in laundry lists and they're doing kind of a Russian doll type of thing. And sometimes they're just doing a relative strength thing when things are really good. The client I'm always talking about who paid for two down payments on two different commercial real estate projects did it simply through playing the relative strength game with the laundry list, which is a momentum list when things are really well. This, for instance, BTU was on the Landry list, and this is going to be a Russian doll, which I'll show you. It was a Russian doll. 
and he did really well. And he just texted me earlier today, and, and I forgot to do it, but I, I, I meant to capture a screenshot of it. And he said he's made $5,000 over the last few days on the Landry list. And he's probably doing that same sort of thing with those stocks. And those stocks have been doing well. There hasn't, there hasn't been a whole lot of longs lately on the list, but they've done okay. Anyway, getting back to the Russian doll, you can see BTU again on the Landry list a few days ago. Nice trend higher, accelerated higher, and then had a nice little deep pullback in here. So kind of a super volatile stock, but looking pretty darn good. And energies, by the way, are one sectors that have been doing really well as of late. So here are the trades on this one, and these are from today. And I didn't make a fortune, but I did okay. And again, I'm showing you a model account so you can get a feel for how it would work. And I got in, I didn't get in that first 15 minutes, although it was tempting, very tempting. And again, sometimes you will have to take the trade in the first 15 minutes. But what I think I did with this one and what I would recommend you do is back out to a daily chart. Somebody last week asked about an hourly chart. Yes, in this particular case, maybe look at an hourly chart and make sure your entry is maybe above an hourly bar if it's if it's not too too far away and then more importantly look at like a daily chart and figure out where that entry could be like if it's an ogre somewhere between the gap and the prior day's low might be a good place to get in okay but you might want to give it a little wiggle room above the high kind of like i did here or the intraday high i should say to avoid getting or help avoid getting triggered in on noise alone so in this particular case, I forget what I was looking for. I think a half a point, if memory serves. Yeah. So I was looking for a half a point. And then I decided to go ahead and bail on the close. And on all of these, I usually bail on the close. And in some cases, holding overnight is, is bad behavior. And the reason is you can only make so much on a very short-term trade. And that's why I don't believe in pure swing trading. I believe that you, for for optimal longer term results in longer term over years, okay, I would recommend you, or I personally like to, I should say, and it's up to you if you want to do the same thing, but I personally like to get that swing trade out, take those profits, just in case that's all I get, okay? And somebody was, I, I preach this over and over again, go in and watch the money management module, but I'll say it again. The reason I do that is twofold statistical and psychological statistical because the chances of it making that one x move okay if i'm risking two points the chances of it moving two points are a lot greater than making let's say a 5x move okay and you can do a little statistics on that even though the market doesn't purely adhere to statistics and let's just say noise alone on a noise alone basis sometimes you get lucky you get those two points and it comes right back in and at least you go home with something psychological it makes you feel good psychologically psychological psychologically it also i think i said psychological but psychologically it also makes you feel good because you're you're getting that short-term profit you have that without freshman psychology rearing its ugly head you do have this immediate need for gratification and in taking those short-term profits you're getting that immediate need for gratification which right now is is very tough on us the, the immediate need for gratification let me rewind that right now the immediate need for gratification is a very strong emotion because of the society we live in you know it's a microwave society as as it's been called well i got a great example of that we bought a brand new house or built a brand new house i should say and it's really really nice and we went into some serious details and we, we've got uh, these reclaimed doors and we've done all these wonderful things. But when, when it came to like the microwave, it's like, I just put the microwave in. You know, we didn't we didn't have time nor inclination to research a microwave. Well, which we would have because our microwave takes two minutes to heat up something that should take one minute. I know first world problems. OK, but it's it's frustrating. Well, there's a, a case in point of the microwave society. I can't wait another minute for my food, you know? <laughs> so anyway, we're used to the, this instant gratification. So that's part of the money management and taking partial profits. 
the climbing that Maslow scale, the self-actualization and realization and, and all these other great things further up the scale is in catching that occasional home run on that second loaf. Now, as I've said a thousand times before, when we're in a choppy market and we just get to the profit target, stop out, profit target, stop out, rinse and repeat, everybody wants to know well, why we're not taking 100% profits. It's like, because sooner or later, we're going to get into a good market and we're going to make a lot of money on that second loaf instead of just stopping out. And then just the flip side, I know I've said this in nausea, but it's amazing. No matter how many times I say things, I'm still going to get a dozen questions. So that's why people are like, why are you beating that dead horse? It's like, well, because I could ask the same stuff over and over again. So I'm going to keep saying the same stuff. But anyway, on the flip side, when we have winner after winner after winner after winner, Sort of like now in the portfolio, mostly winners and all, people are like, well, why don't you just keep 100% of positions? Like, well, I don't have to go through this because it doesn't always happen. Sometimes all you get is that swing trade out of the trade. So that was the BTU trade. That was a recent setup in the Landry list. Uh, GGB, uh, not GGB, SID was another one recently. And I don't think I made enough to ride home about on that one. I think I scratched on a trade and made a little on another and, and not a whole lot. By the way, these Russian dolls, and out of courtesy to my clients, I, I, I put them in kind of cryptic. But I do often mention them in the Facebook group. And if you have the trading service and the Facebook group, you know which ones I'm talking about. Now, some of my behavior which in some cases seems a little random and arbitrary has me thinking in fact i'm always thinking always thinking about the markets and always thinking about my behavior and tom mcclellan a few years back as i've said before gave a really good speech at the american association of professional technical analysts meeting in new orleans a few years back here in new orleans or near near here I should say and he talked about the fact that when you buy a stock, you're forming a relationship between you and the company, and you expect the company to do good things. Every now and then, the, the company does bad things, you know. But for the most part, they do good things. Every now and then, the CEO decides, hey, you know, this uh, secretary here, I just looked her up on the internet, and she used to be an ex-porn star. Well, ex-soft porn star. I had to do that research. That's kind of... That's kind of hard to explain to your wife. I'm, it's, I'm working on my presentation here, baby. Anyway, long story endless. So he decided that it would be okay to go over and fondle her or whatever he did. And, and the company lost a billion dollars in market cap the next day. Hewlett Packard is the name of the company in case you get bored. And that's a bit of an aberration. It does happen. Okay. It, spelled a silent SH, happens. Okay. But for the most part, companies have your best interests in mind, okay? And they're working hard to produce earnings and make a product and all these other good things. And as Tom said, your bigger concern are those people who bought the market prior to you. And I told Tom many times, how many times I quoted him on that? And uh, well, I told Tom, I emailed Tom and said I quoted him many times on that. He says, I'll do you one better. My late mother Marion said, I know I've said this ad nauseum, everyone uses timing in their investing. Some people buy when they have money and sell when they need money, while others use methods that are more sophisticated. They might be much more sophisticated, was the original quote. And I was thinking this morning as I'm doing my morning pages, and yesterday too, I'm always thinking about this, it seems like. But the, and I'll have to get out there and look, somebody pointed it out to me, I think it was in a Facebook group, the, um, I, I just got thrown, I looked at the, uh, my ADE's kicking out, I looked over the q and I knew I shouldn't do that, <laughs> so short-term profits is Pavlov, yeah, Pavlov's dog, ring a bell, Quasimodo, ring a bell, anyway, so I told Tom how many times I've used that quote, because it makes so much sense, and like I said a second ago, I remain cognizant of my own behavior that helps me wrap my head around the behavior of others in the market. And a case in point, which leads to Marion's quote, 
is the Robin Hood traders. Now, I don't know the exact st stats, as I was beginning to say a minute ago before I let myself drift, but I think the Robin Hood accounts tripled in, in value or quadrupled in value. Their assets that they have, I don't know if it's considered assets in the management, but assets. And that was because the government gave out all these little checks and a lot of these kids were already, they already had their rent paid or maybe you don't have to pay rent during COVID. I'm, I met a landlord recently and I was, I guess he was a multimillionaire before COVID and, and now all his, he's got like six rentals and people don't have to pay rent anymore during COVID, but that's another discussion altogether. Anyway, these kids had this newfound money and they're being supported either by their parents or they're not paying their rent or whatever. And all of a sudden, what do they do with it? Well, I'm sure they blew it, some of them, but other ones are seeing their other friends with these Robinhood accounts making money and bragging. So they plowed their money into the Robinhood accounts. So this has nothing to do with the economics of the market. Well, you could argue that, well, the government printed some money and it's false and all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. But all these little crazy momentum stocks just took off. And that's one of the things that we were doing last year and doing okay, at least for a while is following like the top stocks traded on Robinhood. And so that's a great example of people buying when they had money. Now, where I'm going with all this is I've remained cognizant, especially after hearing these quotes from Tom McClellan, I remain cognizant of my own behavior and sometimes irrational behavior when it comes to trading. I'm not a robot here, right? And that helps me wrap my head around the irrational trading in the overall market. So I just showed you where I carried a day trader to home that I probably should have exited if, if my true plan was to get in and then get out by the end of the day. Now, on some of those, and, and I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth, but on some of those Russian doll type trades, I'm thinking like, you know, this is a trade that I wouldn't mind holding longer term because it is a setup. And the reason I might not go after it as a setup to hold longer term originally is because maybe I have a whole lot of stocks in my portfolio anyway. So it is kind of a slippery slope and you have to be really careful when you begin to justify what you're doing but on all those russian doll trades by the way i'm going in for an intraday piece but i'm willing to hold i'd be willing to hold that particular stock longer term okay but yeah you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too you can't get a little bit pregnant you got to be careful and the reason you got to be careful is again with short-term trading your profits are very limited as a general statement and holding overnight, your profits are potentially unlimited. Now, if we get whacked, I don't know where the price is on the stock, so I don't know exactly what number to use, but let's say we get whacked five points in the CPE trade. Well, that's going to hurt, but we're up 20 points or 30 points or whatever the case may be. And if that five point stops us out, it's like, well, you know, so long and things for all the fish. But if you're day trading and getting a half a point here, a point there, maybe even a point, if that much, and then you get a whack five points overnight, then you're going to be a hurt and pup. It's going to take five to 10 profitable day trades, and you'll probably have quite a few in between. By the way, I said day trade. I try to use the word intraday trade because as you've seen with those prior trades, I want to get in and I want to hold that trade all day long. And I just want to let a, a trailing stop take me out and a limit order, take my initial profit. Now I do use a little discretion here and there. And again, that's another one of those things of being cognizant of your own behaviors. Now I exited a carryover of trade, okay? Something that I could have carried over like the MKLA because I needed the money. Well, I don't, I didn't really need the money, but I'm, I wanted to make a transfer to my fund account. I have a, a, a fund account I call Cash Stash. And like I said earlier, at least with the stocks, with the ogres and the Russian dolls and the leverage ETF trading, 
I like to peel off half of the profits every day, at least in my more active account, in the more retirement kind of account type of things or qualified investments. Obviously, I don't, I don't want to do that type of thing. But in a non-qualified account, especially in this model account that's really active, as kind of a game. I like to take this relatively small account and then see what I could peel off of it every day. And I mean, it's kind of a fun little game I play. So I didn't really need the money, but it's like I wanted to put money into that fun account. I made the mistake, as I said a while back, of bragging to my wife and, you know, let's do this, let's do that, let's put it in a pool, let's do an outdoor kitchen, blah, blah, blah. And when she asked how we're going to pay for it, I was like, well, take some money out of savings, borrow from savings or something. I don't want to go into any debt on this. And she's like, well, you're bragging about how great your trading is going. We've been through this cycle before when your trading is going really well. You're like, Mr. Moneybags. <laughs> So she made me put my money where my mouth is. Well, instead of draining some out of my trading accounts down, I thought it'd be a kind of a fun game to just see what we could do on these profit sips. Okay. So my making the decision to A, do do a little bit more of this intraday trading, in some cases a lot more, and B, pull that money out by selling almost every day, except for the examples that I showed you at the end of the day. Those are somewhat arbitrary decisions being made, okay? That has nothing to do, bigger picture, I suppose, with the overall market. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm using certain patterns or whatever, but my transfer of cash, not that I'm going to move the markets, although you'd be surprised if you were messing around with limit orders sometimes and after hours, you could maybe move the markets a little bit, okay? Not intentionally, but you'll just notice that, for instance, in after hour trading, sometimes I'll put my limit order in to get out in between the bid and the ask, and then you'll look at the ask, and that ask is you. So you actually have changed that market and, and wrap your head around that. You know, just think that's some big, huge trader doing that, okay? So being cognizant of your own actions, irrational, rational, arbitrary, or random, helps you wrap your head around the actions of others. Irrational, rational, arbitrary, or random. Now, you'll notice, like I said I, earlier in this particular account where I'm having my little fun and games, right? And if some of these profit centers pan out longer term, I was thinking this morning, and, and you know, whenever I start thinking like this, I gotta be careful, but it's like, if I can make this work, with a small account, then I'm just go ahead and and parlay that and up my size and and use other accounts as opposed to just this one little model that I often use to show you for teaching purposes and all. But as I said earlier, I had a thousand share size, which would have been my normal share share size based on the point risk, okay. And I down that to only 400 shares, and luckily it paid off, paid off nicely. But my trading size was smaller because I just got burnt because I didn't fully adjust for the volatility of the market or whatever the case may be. Now, what's going on in my own personal life that has nothing to do with the overall market, but how many of us have gotten in a fight with our spouse and come in and fire off some trades to show how great we are and then, of course, get our ass handed to us when you do that kind of thing? But I can't say what I want to say, but <laughs> you end up broke and the some other thing. <laughs> but anyway, sometimes our rational behavior, irrational behavior, makes absolutely no sense when it comes to the markets. And the market, it, you're a microcosm of the market. You know, I'll give you an example of a rational, stupid behavior. I'll watch a screen too much and say, you know what, Dave, this is crazy. Go eat breakfast, go have lunch, especially after breakfast because it's still early morning trading. And I'll walk into my office and all of a sudden everything looks great and I want to buy everything, okay? And I call it the walk into the office trade. And I've since curtailed that action to like, okay, well, if I find a walk into the office trade, it's going to have to really knock my socks off, number one. Number two, if I take it, I'll document it. And number three, I try to hold off taking that trade. I try to wait at least five minutes. And if I reach a point where I just can't stand it, I'll take it. And I'm shocked at how many times that has kept me out of bed 
position. So I'm cognizant of my own irrational trading, walk in the office, everything looks great, buy a bunch of stuff or short a bunch of stuff, and then immediately get pissed off when I immediately have a loss handed to me and I wrap my head around that. It's like, okay, well, don't do that anymore, right? But it's like my irrational behavior, there's other people out there that are acting irrational too. As I often say, technical analysis, my definition, which I think is the best definition, by the way, is reading the emotions of the market while at the same time embracing your own. So, I mean, it's old saying, if everybody else is losing, if everyone else is losing their head and you're keeping yours, you obviously don't know what's going on. But in all seriousness, if the things are kind of coming unglued in the market, the market begins imploding, if you could kind of take a step back as an observer, as opposed to an active participant, try to not eliminate, eliminate those emotions because we know we can't eliminate those emotions, but just kind of back off a little bit and be a little bit less emotional, then you're able to act in a proper manner and it sounds a little negative, but you're able to take advantage of the predicament of these other traders. Now, as I said earlier, I used a two-time initial profit target, and my argument there was, well, I held it overnight, I took that extra risk, but it's working out pretty good. So let me just widen out that profit target, because it looks like it's, I'll be able to squeeze more than a half a point out of this thing. And then had that one times trailing stop, not because I was trying to work on one of these R systems, R systems that we talked about recently, <laughs> Pirate's favorite money management system, but more so because I had arbitrarily held overnight. If you are if you go back to like, are we intraday trading or, or are we short term swing trade? What are we doing here? And I made the decision and then I took a smaller position size. Had I had on a thousand shares in this one account, then I probably would have been happy with a half a point, okay? But then it was kind of like, oh, well, let's play this game with fewer shares. Let's not only make up for that prior loss, okay? What does that have to do with this? Nothing, right? But psychologically for me, it does, okay? So again, be cognizant of these behaviors. You know, whenever I'm doing, I walk away from these shows going like, God, I sounded like an idiot. <laughs> and the next day I'm like, yeah, I sound a little crazy, but that's trading, right? You know, we're all crazy. It's, Somebody once said, when I said we're all crazy after all this years of study and all this neurology, studying all this neurology, all this psychology, they're like, you know, you made me feel normal when I say that. So I'll let that craziness come out a little bit because it's true. We are a little crazy in this. I may have been a little bit more active lately because I'm under a deadline to improve, produce income. You know, before it's like, okay, this game, let's just see how much you can make. And now I have a bit of a deadline because the guy's going to show up soon and then he's going to want half down and then all those other things. So I was like, oh, I better get busy, you know. And I think it was Livermore once said, and I wish I had the exact quote in front of me, but there's not a chap on Wall Street that has it gone broke trying to pay for a whatever they bought back then, a railroad car. They used to have these very posh, is that the word? railroad cars or a diamond bracelet or whatever the case may be. I was last Christmas, I was guilty of doing that too. It's like the the ring I was giving my wife turned out to be twice as much plus what I initially thought it would be. The first number was a big nut and the second one was like even twice the size once it went, went through all the, figured it all out. Anyway, so I had to be really careful because that Livermore quote about the diamond bracelet really stuck in my head. So the point I'm trying to get to, and believe it or not, I have one, is, is wrapping your head around your own seemingly arbitrary or emotional actions will help you to wrap your head around the emotional and often arbitrary market price action. And I forget who it was. I think it was Longstreet. In fact, I know it was Longstreet. And he once said that sometimes the market makes a mistake, okay? So sometimes the market just has a random unexplained action. And then I'm sure after the fact, you can figure out what caused that. But in the middle of it, it might make no sense whatsoever. It's like uh, Chewbacca living on Enoch, you know? It, it makes no sense. Johnny Cochran defense. 
I feel the voice in my head. <laughs> Chewbacca, he lives on Enoch. Chewbacca like seven feet tall. And Enoch's are like little bitty fellas. Anyway, Enoch, what's the, what do you call them little guys from Star Wars? Enoch's the planet, right? We'll have to fix that in post. But sometimes the market seems like a little bit of a Chewbacca theory going on. Ewok. All right, the Ewoks, what, what planet are they from? Enoch? The little guys are Ewoks. Eeyore, Elnor, what's the name of that planet? Endor, Endor, thank you. Uranus, hey, John, this is PG-13, buddy, watch it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of the Star Wars, uh, was it a uh, Star Trek joke? Okay, uh, as I said earlier, review the archives. Look, if you knew the service, just come down here to the bottom. These these dates are obviously old, but it'll be the current date and going back about a month down below. Watch as many as you can stand, okay? And if you've never been to the service, go to daylander.com slash archives. And like I said, I'll, I'll update it until maybe the last live recommendation or recommendation is still live. So you can see what's going on. I recommended Simar. In that trade that triggered today the members area does not include the trading service the trading service is on sale right now fyi but the members area is what i call the gold membership and that allows you access to the facebook group and i think it's all more than worth it but obviously i'm biased and i would say 99 percent of every question you have on trading you will find answered somewhere behind that firewall. And if you have any burning questions, the reason we haven't done that, we used to do Q and A sessions for anything that wasn't behind the firewall. And then since the Facebook group started, the questions have really died out. So anyway, you can ask them live in the Facebook group. Oh, I'll walk right into it. Please send me the money from the trades you don't need. <laughs> You know, isn't it amazing how much friggin' money you need? I I got rid of a storage shed for 200. I knocked out uh, some payments to be like debt free, and uh, it's this expense and that expense and on. It came to 1,200 dollars a month. You know, so look at my checking account. Do I have 1,200 dollars? No. Am I interviewing myself? Yes. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at these questions real quick and then uh, we'll hop into the live charts. I took home 200 Nicola. And how do you say that? Nicola? 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 Nicola. Craig says. Lauren, uh, hi Dave. IPO space is still hot uh, to some extent. Yeah, and, I, and there was uh, one or two earlier and I was going to bitch in Facebook, how come none of you guys traded it and come to find out you did? AGTI, or I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's, it's up like 100%. Sky T was our big winner there, obviously, recently. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Um, Academy, ASO was an IPO, but that's for a while back, but that, we're still along that. Yeah, AGTI. Lauren, you got it? Good. I'm glad somebody got it. John got AGTI too. Good. See, you know, I get a lot out of the group. To, you know, some, I was telling someone this would be a great topic, fodder for discussion in the Facebook group, and and you know, he's like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to give up all my stuff. It's like, well, it's not like you're giving it up. It's like you're going to be getting stuff too. And and I get a lot out of the group. You know, like the AG, David got it too. Dang it, <laughs> David W got it. I, I, you know, I didn't get the AGTI. I should have. VEI, you got that one too? Jeez. All right. I've got to pay more attention. <laughs> okay. The IPO space is still hot. Not as hot as it was. It was when the market got iffy a couple of weeks back, it was really hot and I was really enjoying it. And now it's not quite as good. Now, I guess it's amazing how my, and this is again wrapping your head around that psychology, right? Your own personal psychology. I bet if I had caught that AGTI trade, okay, and some of these other ones you guys are talking about tonight and talking about recently, then maybe I would be more excited about IPOs and maybe buying more IPOs. Now, think about my buying. That's a little bit arbitrary. And maybe my buying could push the bid up a, a penny or two and cause somebody else to buy. And then that momentum could feed upon itself. 
as others dogpile on. So very important to wrap your head around the illogical nation, nature of the market. And you know, I've got some 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 newer people and some friends that are starting to get interested in trading. And it's like they confuse the issue with facts. And that's very hard when you're first getting started, is not to confuse the issue with facts. It's just supply and demand when you boil it all down. Do people have money to buy stocks? Okay. In case of this Robin Hood thing, uh, yeah. Okay. Do people need money? Well. Maybe, you know, maybe if inflation keeps going higher and all this other stuff, I'm confusing the issue with facts. But you can't you can't model all that out. Okay. An economist will tell you tomorrow why Willie what he predicted yesterday did not come true today. <laughs> I told it to an economist once and I thought I was gonna get punched. And he's a reverend. Anyway, I digress. Okay, we'll take a look at the VEI, uh, just see what you guys are talking about. Path, yeah, Path was a great IPO too. I'm not sure why I didn't take that one either. I'm not looking too smart, am I? All right, let's hop into the live charts. And you guys want to ask about individual issues. We can start doing that now. That's <laughs> uh, funny. Got a little it, some inside jokes going on here. So um, we had a guy, Don, and he would come every week to the chart show and ask about Ford. And finally, we had to kick him out because Ford was not trending. And then now, weeks, years later, Ford is trending. All right, let me look at these questions before I hop into the uh, overall market. And yeah, keep the stock picks coming. And we'll take a look at some of those IPOs too. Okay, let me just finish Lawrence's point. I have a few IPO, I, initial profit targets hit lately, which is building my conviction in following your system and slowly increasing position size from my pilot by testing sizing, winky face smile. Well, good, Lauren. So what Lauren's saying is he's following the method and the money management, and he's taking those partial profits. We had one of you guys recently, and I think it was uh, George or some, I think it was George, and he gave me a list of a half a dozen IPOs that he was gonna go after based with like buy it, be patterns and things like that. And every one of them worked and it's kind of like, Okay, I'm glad it worked, but you got to be careful when everything works that good. And it, it, you need to temper your expectation, as I say probably every week. I had a couple join a trading service, husband and wife team, and they were team in business. They had built a very good business, and then they were trading my stuff, essentially pullbacks and taking partial profits and trailing stops and everything, and we were in a great momentum period and we were printing money and, and they're like, well, why am I wasting all this time running this business, which is a big pain in the ass. I mean, yeah, it's giving me some, some trouble, you know, seven figures or six, six figures plus a year or whatever. <laughs> Income when I could just trade for a couple of hours a day, not even that long, just, you know, watch day of service and the next day come in, spend a few minutes trading and then go relax. Well, try to explain to them, it's not always that good. I spend way too much time tempering everybody's expectations. I know that, but I can sleep at night. All right. Um, I'm not getting sued for 137 million or whatever it is, like some of those comebacks, but I digress. All right. P is up a smidge today. Nothing to write home about, but we are above the bow tie moving averages. Once again, 10 simple, 20 exponential, 30 exponential. Nothing magical about those moving averages. As I preach every week, there I go, tempering your expectations. But they can help to keep you on the right side of the market. If you look like an EACP platform and look at the proper order with my plugin, which is free, just like this video, you get the plugin for free. If you're a member of Stock Charts, I can't help you with your subscription. I have to pay for mine too, or at least most of mine, I think. Anyway, but that plugin can kind of help you give you a visual representation of the proper order of these bow tie moving averages. And the P's are up a little bit today. Not much to write home about. Just shy of all-time highs, though. One thing of a little concern that I've been talking about at nauseam is if you go back, let's say we go back to the middle of April. Wow, I can't believe May's almost done. That's crazy. We're only up about a third of a percent. I mean, we could be down to 30%, third of, ooh, excuse me, 30% on the open tomorrow, right? And wipe that out. 
So we've obviously lost some steam in here. And it's been choppy too. And you watch it intraday and everything's kind of all over the place. And for instance, with the ETF trading, you got to be really careful not to chase your own tail. And lately, that's what I'm saying. Earlier, I was like, I don't think it's been that great because I've I've caught one a day on a few days recently. Seems like I'll catch one huge trend in one, but then I'll get chewed up in all the other ones and maybe get hit pretty hard in one to where I'm barely making anything, if anything, okay? And sometimes I have a losing day. And it's just not these fantastic days, like for instance, like right here, you get a gap lower, and just go straight back up. All these inverse shares are doing opening gap reversals. It's just fantastic, you know? Or you get a gap and go day, you know? Where it just gaps, it just keeps going and going and going. Well, lately it's just kind of like, you know, opens and yeah, and chops around, chops around. It looks like it's going to the moon, then comes right back in. So you gotta be careful not to change, chase your own tail. NASDAQ composite, bow ties are trying to turn back up. I'm not excited about a bow tie signal at high levels as a signal in and of itself, but if that bow tie, to the upside that is, but if bow tie signal to the downside after like a major double top after all time highs, then I would pay careful attention. That's why I've been concerned about the NASDAQ potentially rolling over in here, but so far it's working its way higher. So far so good. The Rusty, the Rusty still looks like a big picture triple, I'm sorry, a big picture head and shoulders top. I said the same thing in the service tonight. Looks like a big fat top. Now, short, short term, you can see we've broken them out nicely. We've got a little bit of Langer light, meaning the lows are greater than the moving average, all three in this particular case. 10 simple, 20 exponential, 30 exponential for those keeping score. So that's certainly a good thing. And we still have a little ways to go to brand new highs, but it's certainly a big improvement today, up a percent, better than the poke in the eye, right? But I would remain concerned about this head and shoulders top. Now, as I've been preaching lately, when we're talking about classical technical analysis in the trading service and then in the Facebook group, it's, I think classical technical analysis is great. Reed Murphy, Schaubacher, Edwards and McGee, McGee and all that. But it's a little hard to time off of it. Now, you can maybe take a bow tie off a triple top or head and shoulders top or a double top or something type of setup. And I think biotech was a good example of that. But in general, you want to be careful with using like big picture technical analysis. Use it to back up. Use it sort of as a Russian doll, so to speak, for your shorter term analysis and shorter term setups, such as a bow tie or a first thrust or something like that. Use it to kind of back you up. While we're up here, take a look, let's take a look at gold real quick. Gold's been choppy you know, all over the place, but it finally got its act together. As I say quite often, this is what I was trying to say earlier, I'm not as excited about a bow tie here, although it was, I guess, one year plus low, so that's a good thing. I'd be more excited about a bow tie coming off of major, major, major lows. Let's take a look at like a weekly chart, okay? So I'm more excited about a bow tie like way back here at 20 year lows or 15 year lows than I am at a bow tie forming to the upside back here. Now to the downside, again, yeah, off all time highs, that's a big deal. I think we had one here. You can see that was a top for quite a while. But again, yes, it can help to keep you on the right side of the market. Profit order and Landry light, if that's all you did was look at those two things, I think you would do pretty good on staying on the right side of the trend. Write that down. Go in and watch some of my other presentations where I talk about those things specifically. Energy's looking pretty good in here, kind of flatsville today, kind of all over the place. This is kind of indicative of the market we've been dealt with. And it's kind of hard to make any money when it just kind of chops around, chops around, chops around all day. But longer term, still looks pretty good. So it looks like it wants to resume its uptrend. Metals and mining, speaking of resuming its uptrend, bang up day there, looking pretty darn good, pushing higher now above the 10, the 20, and the 30. And you can see the What do you call that? Proper water and Landry Light, Landry Light, at least off the 30 EMA, has been there for quite a while. So that's a good looking trend so far. Gold, the stocks finally getting their act together after being quite choppy for a while, working their way higher, pulling back. And silver's kind of all over the place as it normally is, but it looks like it's trying to push into brand new highs here, kind of wide and loose for now. But if we can make all time highs and stay there, that would certainly be. A good thing. Foods. Now, foods can be a defensive area, but foods look pretty good. Longer term uptrend. 
remaining intact there. Banks look pretty good too. I'm long EBC. I've been long EBC forever. I think some of you guys are too in the group, right? And that's just one that kind of bores you to death. But you know what? Longer term, hell, I don't mind being bored to death. This was an IPO by B way back here, like on that day there. Okay. And don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure we talked about it on that day there. And I've taken my partial profits and this thing just kind of bores me to death, but so what, okay? It's up 100% almost from where I got in. I mean, that's that's much better than a poke in the eye. But yeah, banks are still doing pretty darn good longer term. Speaking of banks, let's take a look at the bonds real quick. Now, one would think, confusing the issue with facts, right? That bonds would just go down, 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 down. And you know, as bonds go down, what, does ha what happens to rate? Rates go up, right? Well, that really hasn't happened. Yeah, bonds have been going down for quite a while, okay? And look, there's your bow tie, right? Off of major highs in here, okay? And that top remains in place for a while. Let's see where the weekly top was. The weekly top, yeah, was back here. I mean, look at that top, it's huge, right? Tiny L was sneaking out here. Okay, so that top still remains in place, but short term, intermediate term, okay? In other words, last several months, kind of bottoming out of here. We could actually bow tie up. That would be just the opposite of what's logical. And by the way, FYI, write this down. When the market does just the opposite of what is logical, you often catch people on the wrong side of the market, okay? I guess the crowded trade, so to speak, I'm hoping using that term right, would be to be short bonds, you know, because all this logic and interest rates and everything, but if bonds go up, that means rates going down, right? Kind of hard to believe. Well, I'll show you a couple of things that might make it a little less hard to believe, at least for now, okay? But I know that, that printing press is just, I, I could hear it whirring from here, right? And I'm, what, 2,000 miles away from it. <laughs> They're printing some money. Did, did, has anybody seen that, uh, what's that thing? I think I have it here. They were talking about the, the craziness of uh, crypto. And uh, they talked about one currency only has one node and trillions and trillions in um, circulation. And 25% of the supply was the last six months. Does anybody know if that's a fact or not? And obviously I'm talking about the US dollar, right? So sooner or later, it's gonna catch up to the markets, okay? And who knows, maybe there's some manipulation. Oh, did I say manipulation? That could be happening to keep the bonds where they are. Now, maybe one reason that bonds are bottoming out a little bit, take a look at like wood, okay? And I was looking at lumber earlier. I'll pull it up in just one second. In fact, I'll get, uh, let me just get ACP up and running in another window here so we'll have it ready. But lumber is starting to top out a little bit. So I might just want to hold off on my outdoor kitchen for a little while because it looks like lumber is beginning to top out. So anyway, you can see wood looking a little questionable. These are the forestry companies, okay? That's the ETF. I don't know if you could borrow this or not to short it. You might be able to. Even though it's kind of thin, it's made up of, of companies. So the companies, the underlying companies are pretty thick. So you might be able to get a trade off. I, I talked with a money manager once and they'll actually make a market for like a like a money manager wants to go in and get a billion dollars worth they'll make a market for him because you have stocks backing them but anyway we don't i don't have that problem maybe some of you do <laughs> drugs have been looking pretty good as of late remember we had this bow tie back here and i kind of called them down and out and they did sell off fairly hard out of the bow tie but then they found their way and they're back up not too far from all-time highs you don't you know me shorter term they look good but you know me i like to see them hit all time highs with a little bit of vigor, but for the most part, drugs looking pretty good. Biotech, not so much, okay? We had the bow tie here, we had the first thrust here, we sold off hard, sharp retrace, sold off hard, chopped around, chopped around, chopped around. This is very typical for the short side. And then now we've kind of rolled back over a little bit last couple of days, notwithstanding. So biotech still looks questionable. Health services, lost some steam in here, longer term uptrend still intact. Manufacturing actually looks pretty good. Had a decent day today. It looks like it's trying to resume its longer term uptrend. Take a look at the order of the moving averages. Take a look at the Landry light. 
all that's looking pretty good. Now, M and C, especially if you drill down to like the home builders, okay, and other areas of material construction, starting to look a little toppy in here. Now, a few big updates make all the difference in the world, and today we had a decent day, okay? But that's starting to look a little bit toppy to me, and you could just use a variety of indicators. My favorite is the net-net price movements. And if we go back to around the 16th, you can see we're barely up since then. And so we've definitely lost some steam. Go back about a month, we're down about a percent or so. So not a route higher anymore there. It doesn't mean they can't turn back up. Leisure, for instance, looks like it was kind of losing steam and now it's turned back up, making new highs in here. That looks okay. The point I'm trying to make is the market is still a little mixed in here and it's still a little choppy and it's still trying to find its way. Transport, you saw retail was a little sideways at high levels, longer term, okay. Transport's just shy of all time highs, so they're looking pretty good. Again, the semis are getting their act together once again. They've rallied up lately, still have a double top in place, as you can see. This bow tie top for now remains in place, but obviously, we go on to make new highs, then that top would no longer remain in place. Okay, let me see if I could switch over real quick to the ACP and let me just show you one or two of these things that I've been discussing and then keep the questions coming. We've got a few, I can see they're stacking up in here, but we'll, we'll get to them. All right, so we take a look at ACP over here and let's take a look at like the P's and this is all I'm saying. I'll talk about this ad nauseum. So let me just go through it real quick. Let's say we put the Landry light in and with the 30 EMA, which is now my favorite or lately my favorite, not my all-time favorite. And then let's put the reference level at, let's just say 10. And I don't know if the color is going to be good in the reference. Let's uh, make it like a nice cyan color. Okay. So using, let's say, 10 bars of Landry light, you can see that... If you have 10 bars of Landry light, you're above this little cyan here, and the market's doing pretty good. And as long as as long as it's mostly green, the market's doing pretty good. Okay. When it's red, you want to get cautious. When red, when well during the pandemic. Okay. First thrust down, TFM 10% sell signal, lots and lots of signals back there. The other thing you could do to help with your, I mean, obviously draw your big blue arrows, right? But the other thing you could do to help keep you on the right side of the trend as I said earlier and I know I'll beat a dead horse on this somebody says you don't you don't teach bow ties every day it's like I think I do <laughs> take a look at this okay bow tie proper order okay this is a very useful thing green stay long okay yellow get cautious green stay long yellow get cautious okay and we could be going back to green right now it looks like we're back in the green at least as of today so maybe the market's okay, at least for now, at least based on this indicator. All right, so that was that. The only other thing I want to show you here, let's put in like, uh, this is one, something I'm working on, but let's put in like Lab D. Lab U would also work too. Just eyeballing this, you can see it's been chopping around quite a bit, and that's probably why I haven't made any money lately trading this. The other thing I've been working with would be multiple volatilities and, and I would encourage you to do some research here on your own and as long as you share it with me because maybe this will help me out a little bit but I've been getting chewed up in a lot of these little ETFs you know a couple of really good days like that day there if I didn't make money on that day shame you know that looks like a gift right there nice wide range bar nice opening gap reversal lab D would be just lab U would be just the opposite I probably played it if I didn't make money on that day I'm ashamed I'll check this tomorrow when I do the editing to see if I made money. If I didn't, I'm going to be embarrassed, but I'm pretty sure I did. I hope I did. Oh, now I'm getting nervous. But the thing I was working on, these are all, it says Landry volatilities, but this is just historical volatility. I didn't invent this volatility indicator. It was popularized by Nathan Sheldenberg. I always get his name wrong. My apology. Keys to you, Nate. And then further popularized by Larry Connors. And then I've played around with it quite a bit. But you can see that the volatilities have really dropped off here. And that's why the intraday trading has probably been bad. Remember, I've showed you ad nauseum. I had the client was making all the money in Boeing, making money, making money, making money. And then he started losing money. But it was working so well. Well, 
it's easy to see what somebody's doing wrong from the outside, believe me. I mean, how many friends and family do you have where you could see exactly what they're doing wrong? You know, <laughs> don't do that, right? But they do it anyway. A little bit harder to self-police yourself, right? Anyway, the average true range, I think this is a 10 bar average true range, yeah. I haven't really worked with average true range much. I mean, years ago, I worked with everything, okay? And a lot of people want to try to use it to set stops, and, and maybe there's something there. I think that I eyeball charts, and I by eyeballing a chart, I could say, okay, well, if I'm going to trade this and try to hold on, it's going to take a, a four or five-point stop, or if I want to hold on for a swing trade, at least a three-point stop, maybe more. And then you look down here, and lo and behold, yeah, it's about three points here and you know, four or five points, whatever, especially if I broaden that out a little bit. Anyway, you can see two things are happening. The average true range is coming down. This is an important number if you are trading intraday, okay? And then these volatility numbers, various volatility starting at four and going all the way up to 100. The 100 day is still pretty high, but all these other ones are dropping off fast. And the reason you wanna have those shorter term numbers in here is you wanna see what's happening shorter term. Yeah, longer term, it's still pretty high, but we're trading mostly short term with the hope of holding longer term for position trading, which you don't want to do with these leverage ETFs, by the way, especially a short one. But anyway, so if you guys want to work with this, I put in a request today on how can I share these. I don't know if I could share them, but I'm hopefully could share these templates with you if you want to go in and do this on your own. And everything I'm recreating here, you can recreate some of it in Telechart. And then Metastock has my indicators, so to speak, in their platform. All right, let's switch back to, oh, lumber. I want to show you lumber. So if we take a look at lumber, I think it's, uh, what do you call a thing, a carrot? Oh, you can't do commodities in, um, no problem, no worries. Does anybody know? I don't think you can do commodities in ACP yet. So lumber, I think it's up carrot, U21 would be September. It's been a while since my commodity trading advising days. But you can see lumber, okay, you know, back here, some people, oh, it's gonna, the price is gonna go up forever. No, it won't, Danny, you know. No, you don't, Danny. But you can see now they've begun to roll over again with 1600. And now it's about 11.63. So to me, it looks like they're kind of topped out in here. So I'm kind of okay with holding off, uh, well, as long as it takes the guy to get it show up. I mean, he hasn't showed up yet, but he'll probably be a few weeks before he shows up in building an outdoor kitchen because we'll let those lumber prices drop a little bit, okay? Not that we're gonna time it. If it goes back to new highs, we're kind of screwed anyway, but uh well dave why not hedge it yeah okay you're right we probably could <laughs> that's another story altogether anyway so that's lumber what i wanted to show you earlier and we actually have a home builder to short tomorrow and i'll follow up next week and i'll let you know how that does i should have made a mystery chart all right vei also hasn't hit the profit target vei f2 yeah, this is a this one I think was a little thin, and it doesn't really jump out at me as a buy at B. But yeah, it was a buy at B a few days ago. That one might be worth keeping on your radar. I I, I know you're long, so I don't want it to pull back, but it, it'd have to pull back a little bit for me to go after it as a new setup. But yeah, skin is the one I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, skin. I'm in skin. I'm, I have some skin in the game. Okay. And Skin is one of those uh, stupid spot acquisition companies, whatever you want to call them. But who cares? And I think the entry was right here. I forget the name. What was the name of the company before with Skin? We talked about it. I know we talked about it on Facebook. Okay. Took off, came back in. This also sets it up here as a trend knockout. And I am long this company right now. In fact, if you have uh, children and you're saving for their college funds, I would I would raid those college funds and put all the money into skin of grandchildren. No, I'm joking, because I'm long, right? I'm talking about position. Please don't do that. <laughs> Somebody's gonna take me out of context one day or, or just or purposely uh, give me a lot of trouble. 
All right, Path. Yeah, Path is one that I like. I did not play. Reason I didn't play Path was because I don't play the higher price by these. Now, technically, you could. It's like sometimes I forget about my own stuff, okay? Technically, I guess on this day here, you would have gotten long if you're using the five-day SMA thing where you look for a land your light on a five-day simple moving average and a new closing high. And there is no price, minimum price on that. Buy it B used to be 20. Now it's, I'll trade up to $30 a share now. But yeah, for something like Path, I'm waiting for a pullback, okay? But yeah, I agree. I agree, uh, David. It does look like at least a few days ago, it was a buy because it was a new closing high and the low is greater than five SMA. It's a great little pattern, if I say so myself. I'm not selling, I just gave it to you. So looking at, okay, in PCE. Yeah, he's looking at this one for a buy at B. First thing jumps out at me is A, it is thin. Looks like it's pretty thin. So check the, check the spread intraday to see where that is, okay? And the next thing is it's got to close way up here. So that probably won't trigger. But what I would recommend you do, and it's something that I forget to do, is I would set an alarm on this one at, let's say, 26, okay? And go about your life. And, and something that I do set alarms, but I didn't realize how important it was until I was at, and that's a great thing about getting together and talking with each other. And that's what we do every day in Facebook. But sooner or later, I want to get together and do it in person, right? And we will, don't worry about that. I'll get a, we'll have a little retreat, even if it's something small. One of you guys has a nice place in Hilton Head and offered it up, which is very generous of you. And there'll probably be a lot of expenses though. It won't be exactly cheap. I'm not looking to make money. I don't care. But I'd like to get everybody together and do something. And we will, I promise. But let's just give a little time. Let this COVID thing blow over a little bit and a few other things. Anyway, long story endless, one thing I learned at Charlie Kirk's retreat was that he puts in a lot of alerts. So see something like this for a possible buy ID. Put an alert at 26, okay? At least it'll wake you up. And we'll see what happened. SMWB. Yeah, the range on this one looks a little bit narrow, okay? Volume, eh, probably on the cusp. We, we can have to wait and see. But yeah, buy it, be technically close above 22. I'd like to see a little bit more range, but you know what? I'm going to give you credit for that. So I'd put alert, just maybe not far above from where it is now, and keep an eye on that one. Yeah, absolutely. What I like to do is about 20 to 30 minutes before the close, depends on if time allows, but it's as soon before the close as possible, right? At least 30 minutes before the close. I like to go in and take a look at these potential buy at these setups in the IPO. So setting up prop, uh, an alert probably wouldn't be a bad idea. And like I was saying earlier, Charlie Kirk sets hundreds of them. Uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. Now you got okay. So Lauren, here you got you got range, okay. You've got volume, okay. Now, day one set the high, so you'd have to close above the high. Now, that's, what did I just say? $20 rule was now the $30 rule. So I think it'd be okay to take this particular one just for S and Gs. Let's see what a five-day simple moving average would look like. Yeah, so you do have one bar of Landry Light here, okay? So new closing high, but ideally above this high here too. In fact, that's I would go ahead and make it above that high. T-U-Y-A, T-U-Y-A. You are all over these by these. Look at you. That one looks like the one we just looked at. Or did we just look at that one? No. Okay, yeah, that was T-U-Y-A. We looked at that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, GT, GTBT was one of my recent Russian dolls. I don't know if I made money on this one or not. I have to go back and look. And again, maybe in post, I could take a look. I want to say on this day here, I did okay on that one. But I'll go back and look and see. But yeah, this was in the Landry list. It rallied up nicely. It pulled back. I and mean, this is one case where, you know, they keep your eye on the prize. Maybe keep your eyes on the prize, right? Maybe I should have thought of that about this one more as a position trade as opposed to going in and making a little money just because I 
God, I hope it worked out, but just because I thought I saw a little money in, in the corner and all I do is walk over and pick it up and make a little money for the day. A-G-T-I, but yeah, not set up now. Uh, this one would have to pull back, but yeah, technically this was a buy at B back here. I don't know why I didn't take it, but it might've been a little bit thin back there. So that might've been why on that one. John says, don't look now, but okay, this is F, what do we say? Like, yeah, where's where's uh, Don now, you know? I guess I finally pissed him off enough to where he doesn't come back anymore. But yeah, this was Don, you know, what about Ford? 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 It looks like an electric cardiogram. You know, what about Ford? What about Ford? Drop a line of stone, right? I'm a momentum guy, okay? I don't know how many times I'm going to say that. But yeah, now, where's where's Don? Don, you're welcome if you want to come back and talk about Ford. You're welcome anytime. Just don't talk about Ford or any other stock that's chopping back and forth just because you have a position in it. I don't know you have a position in it because I know you do. HRMY for Chris, CJ. HRMY. Yeah, that's kind of bottoming out. You know, what, what, what jumps out at me is you've got a mound of overhead supply to get through. So I would pass based on that. Let's take a look at the boat side. Oh, it's beautiful setup. Absolutely beautiful. Good eye, CJ, but too much overhead supply, okay? It's like the joke about the brothel on top of the hardware store, right? Too much effing overhead. <laughs> Poor Don. That was a long time ago. Well, it was three years ago when Kit last kicked him out. I think he finally got tired. He used to come right back in. I kick him out, he'd come right back in, and then I started kicking him out two or three times a show. He finally got the idea. <laughs> Yeah, this looks pretty good as a possible top, but it's a little too thin, okay? Yeah, you think about a short? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I hear you, and, and you're answering your own question. Um, yeah, if it bounced up a little bit, it's just too thin. I'd much rather short a year on the service. So look at the short tonight. It's it's a it's a thick home builder three-letter stock, okay? I, I like a big, thick stock on the short side. The problem with a thin stock is, you know, what if some big fund decides he wants to own this stock or something? It's going to really push it around. I passed because it was a bank stock, lesson learned. Yeah, that EDR, that was a little um, EDR. Uh, what was it? I already forgot the name of it. Yeah, whatever that prior bank was. It wasn't that exciting, but it's like, eh, it's a buy a B. It's got an okay range, so that's why I went after it. EBC, yeah. Yeah, I hear you. It was a little bit, it was a bank, you know, and it was a little bit, the range wasn't tremendous, but it was okay, and it looked pretty good, and it was also beginning to kind of accelerate higher, and I just thought it was worth a shot, okay? Nice little pullbacks and TKOs along the way, though. I should have re-recommend, I should have, this should have been an official setup back here. And that's the other thing, too, by the way, when you look at our charts, and you look to the left, and by the way, if you find a broker, let you trade off the left side of the chart. I guess that joke doesn't work anymore. Just look for patterns that, that should stand out like a sore thumb, like a TKO right here after a nice persistent trend. And ask yourself, should you or could you, or let me rephrase that, ask yourself, could you or should you have caught that pattern? That's part of the deliberate practice thing that I often talk about. Oh, geez, we're out of time, aren't we? Oh, geez, what's, what, what's that symbol? I don't remember which one it was. Yeah, Al by a D. Yeah, we're looking at that one. Uh, could be soon, okay? It was only four days in. One, two, three, four. So any close about 1250, absolutely. In fact, I need to put an alert on that one just in case I forget tomorrow. So yeah, absolutely. Al, y'all put a, a alert at 1250. So we make sure we take a look at that one. Somebody bring up tomorrow on Facebook so we won't forget. O-T-L-Y, O-T-L-Y. See, you guys are getting me excited about, about IPOs again. I haven't been seeing that many lately, but you know, maybe maybe my recent lack of performance in some of these IPOs, missing a couple of these, has affected my thinking toward them, okay? Yeah, drugs, M and, M and, uh, drugs and the uh, major bigs does look like a cup and handle. I, I don't like cup and handles as much at high levels as low levels. But yeah, I hear you. Yeah, this could work. Uh, range is a little bit on the thin side, but not bad. Prior Landry list, BTU close to a trigger. Uh, yeah, uh, BTU actually triggered, okay? Or 
close to a trigger. I would say the reason I took it off today was because it made this wide range bar higher. And I figured I showed it to you guys for several days. It should be on your radar by now. Um, I think it's still okay. Technically, I would call that a trigger today. But yeah, I think it's still pretty good. This is a former Landry List one. This was the BTU I played today for a nice little pop. Okay. Well, look, I'm out of time. Boy, you know, good questions this week. Good stock picks this week. Good uh, crowd this week. I want to thank everybody for coming. Anybody who's not in Facebook, have a good weekend. And anybody that's in Facebook, I'm sure we'll talk tomorrow again. Uh, and also, anybody who's not in Facebook, happy Memorial Day. Have a great, fun, and safe Memorial Day weekend. I'll see you uh, next week. I might not do a show because we only have four days in the week. It's a little hard to put a show together that quick. But uh, you, got, you take time to put a show together? <laughs> it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Quiet. Anyway, uh, again, everybody have a great and safe Memorial Day weekend, and thank you so much.